participating. We, uh, as you know, um, Artsfield is a convener, a grant maker. Uh, we host leadership programs for the arts sector. And uh, we also work and uh, do arts advocacy and advocate for arts funding and arts programming uh, in our city. So we appreciate you being with us today. Um, I wanted to start out and just uh, share a quote as we usually do. And this one is from Duke Ellington. And I also wanted to thank everyone for their uh, participation and their candidness on our call last week about racial equity in our local arts sector. Um, we, uh, we, we work to be people of action. So um, after that, uh, we conferred with some of the local uh, groups that help us out with funding and we were able to secure some funding uh, so that Sarah, our presenter last week could actually begin to work one-on-one -on -one and consult with some of the arts organizations in our city. Uh, we're also making plans to do quarterly sessions, uh, learning sessions about racial equity in the arts and in society in general. So we will keep you posted about those and make sure that you uh, get an invitation. Um, as we move into the rest of today's meeting, if you can just remember to, if you're not speaking, uh, please put yourself on mute. And um, I wanted to just take a few more moments to kind of focus on our question today and think of the arts and culture events and activities that have really been sustaining us over the past week. And you can feel free to put those into the chat. Um, Cam is saying Arts Build has been sustaining her. Good. <laughs> Thank you, Cam. Freedom Sings USA and Abbey of the Arts. Uh, someone privately told me that my garden looks like paradise. Uh, my groundhog agrees with you. The barking legs driving dances. Yes, Monica is saying that that really sustained her. What else? Rise Chattanooga's meetings with JB and with Suspire have been amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. That was Kate Warren. Thank you. What other things? Josiah's workshops, 800 Collective, yes. These meetings too. Thank you. Well, we're going to keep at it. So we have lots to cover today. Um, we have uh, Mr. Barry White with us from the Chattanooga Tourism Company. Uh, he's going to give us some updates about uh, what they're up to. Uh, Katie Hendricks is going to talk to us about how arts uh, artists and arts organizations can apply for uh, Kiva funding with CoLab. And then Miriam Manda from Arts Build is gonna to talk to us and share the mapping project that we've been working on for the past few months. Um, so we're gonna be doing some share screen today and uh, other people will be sharing their screens. So I'm gonna stop share and um, Barry, if you wanna take over from me and you can take it from here. Thank you, James, give me just a second to do this. All right. So hopefully everybody can see. You all see the large screen? Yes, we can see it. OK. Just one second, let me work on the technology here. Okay, um, make sure I can advance. Having just a couple of technology difficulties here. Uh, 
uh, would you want us to just go to Katie and wait? Um, or, yeah, for or some you reason. Just talk I'm to us. No, I'm sorry. For some reason, I'm not able to advance my slides. All right. Uh, we're going to see if you stop share. Um, we can, Katie, I know, is in the room. So um, she right. could take well, over and then we'll come back to you. And uh, James, I can send this presentation. We'll send this presentation to you and James if you want to, and then you can control. So, Katie, can you um, share your slide? Sure. Yeah, let me try. <laughs> Do those pop up? Yeah, we see it. Great. I'll just move to present so they're a little bigger. Well, good morning. Thank you all so much for letting me speak with you this morning. My name is Katie Hendricks. I'm the chief of staff at CoLab. And I have the great opportunity to work with small business owners, entrepreneurs of all kinds with their capital. One of the things that I get to do here in Chattanooga and our surrounding area is work with Kiva. For those of y'all who've never heard of Kiva, Kiva is actually a, an international micro lending program. So it started all over the world. Um, and part of what Kiva wanted to start with was just that dreams are universal and opportunity is not. And so how could they provide funding and access to capital to folks who might not be able to um, have access to it otherwise? So here in the US, Kiva started about 10 years ago. Um, it's been internationally a lot longer than that, um, but they really believed that how can we provide funding for folks who might not qualify for a typical bank, bank loan or for just they're early stage and so it's a lot of risk. And so Kiva came into the space to provide that type of capital for folks. So we launched here in Chattanooga um, in September of 2018. James has been a big part of that. There's so many other organizations in Chattanooga that's come around and, and brought Kiva to Chattanooga and, and have had been supportive this whole time of you know, who Kiva is and the, and the entrepreneurs that wanna utilize Kiva. Um, this is just kind of, you know, you don't always think about how early stage people might be and they might just need $3,000. Um, they might just need a little bit of type of funding to start their business, but just being new, maybe just having, um, having bad credit or just being in a place where it's harder to get funding from a typical lending institution. And so that's really why Kiva, Kiva comes into play. So what Kiva is, um, Kiva provides 0% interest loans, crowdfunded loans up to 15,000. And this 15,000, you can see in this grid right here, um, current, previously before the COVID-19 pandemic, Kiva did up to 10,000, but they've extended that now to be up to $15,000 loans. So as you can kind of see right here, there's different breakdowns where you might fall into as you apply. Um, they want to just check out your debt to income ratio. They want to just see if you're going to take on another loan. What does that look like? Um, just want to see if you have a business bank account. Do you have a business website? Do you have a business license? Um, those are some of the just kind of basics of what Kiva is going to look for. And depending on where you fall, maybe what you can apply for, the, these are the typical buckets, this one to 3,000, 3,500 to six and then 6,500 to 10, and then above to 15,000. So um, the way Kiva works is you apply for your loan. Once you're approved and you fall, you know, depending on if you got 1,000, you got 3,500, then Kiva assigns you a number of people. As you can see right there, you can see that private fundraising piece. So Kiva might assign you five to 15, 30 people that you ask within your network to lend you $25. So you have 15 days to ask those people in your private network to lend you $25. And this is your private fundraising period. This is where Kiva believes you have the opportunity to, you know, kind of show your skin in the game. Are you committed to fundraising your loan? Um, once you get those people, you move to the public website, this kiva.org that, as I mentioned, is all over the world. So then on there, you have 45 days to raise the rest. So in crowdfunding, there's all different types of crowdfunding. I'm, I should have mentioned that first. If you're not familiar, 
Kickstarter is a type of crowdfunding. GoFundMe is a type of crowdfunding. Um, all different crowdfunding platforms have different um, features to them. Either they're fees, maybe they're rewards based, maybe they're donation. Kiva um, is a loan. And so you are fundraising for your loan for your business. And in that time frame, which could end up being, you know, 60 days with that 15 and the 45, you have to raise the full amount. So you have to raise the entire amount during the time frame to get any. Um, but once you do, and as I mentioned, Collab and all these other organizations are very supportive of Kiva entrepreneurs. So we're coming alongside you. Um, it's a bit scary to fundraise and it's a bit scary to be vulnerable and to be out there, but we are here to help you and support you along, you know, every step of the way. Um, and so once you've fundraised, once you've gotten a full amount, then you're able to get that within your, you know, in your PayPal account within three to five business days. And right now for COVID, they're offering a six month grace period before you have to repay. So I know I've given everyone a lot of information, but if what you can remember is that Kiva offers working capital loans, 0% in, interest, up to 15,000, and you don't have to start paying probably, you know, until for six months. So most of the term loan, loan terms could be up to 36 months. So the larger loans, you might have up to three years to repay. Um, so we just wanted to mention Kiva as an option, and I, I forgot to say who's eligible. You have to be 18 or older, not currently in bankruptcy or foreclosure, and using the loan for a legal business. Um, I know that there's some chat, so I, I can pause if I need to answer any questions. Great. Um, so let me continue on a little bit. Kiva right now um, is a great space if you, maybe you're not looking for a loan, but you wanna help small business owners, artists, entrepreneurs. And so Kiva, you can actually go on Kiva and lend as, as little as $25 to someone who's fundraising. And when they start paying their loan back, you get, say, you know, I've loaned you $25 and I'll get 70 cents each month that you pay back until I've recouped my 25. So the big part about Kiva and why it's so successful all over is that people who lend and invest are um, very likely to lend again and to go to other people. So I don't know if people who are attending today have, have lent to anyone that in Chattanooga has had a Kiva campaign, but you might have Kiva dollars left in your account that you could go lend to someone else. Um, just a couple, I know I don't wanna run over my time. This is what a Kiva profile looks like. This is one of um, our Chattanooga bars that, that was funded in 2018, Kalina with the bitter bottle. Um, I don't know if y'all know her, but she raised $6,000 to be able to get inventory and materials and get into a commercial space where she could make her bitters. Um, we've had Gable, he uh, has a product called Tech Touch. He's a local entrepreneur. Tech Touch is actually very perfect for right now where you can put, um, it's a little device you put on your finger and so you don't get germs from touch screens. Um, and our latest, uh, actually my first artist to fund with Kiva is Amber with Soda Ash and Sand. So she's a local stained glass artist. I don't know if any of y'all know her, but her pieces are stunning. So go to sodaashandsand.com. And she raised $3,000 in three days. So it's very possible. There's great opportunity out there. Um, I wanted to just, if I can show y'all one couple other quick things where this is the Kiva website, the kiva.org website. And you're, if y'all are able to see, um, these, are, these are Kiva folks who have raised kind of, I just put in the arts. And so they've had 382 loans raised over the years. And so you can just see, I mean, look, this one's fantastic. So this is what a Kiva profile looks like. You're able to see he's from Michigan. Um, you're able to see what his, maybe ideally what his business is, what he's doing. There's a description of what the loan is. And then you get to share your story. And that's the cool part about Kiva is that you get to tell who you are. You get to tell what your business is about. And then you're able to share what the loan's for. So it's a lot more personal and it's a lot more, he was able to get 
seven thousand dollars by 89 lenders um so that really is a big part of i mean kiva is a great way to to market your business to share who you are and share your story and we are here i'm here and you know i'm gonna go back to my slides just to show you all my email again um i'm here to be able to be a resource i will help you figure out if you're eligible how that you can apply work you through the, the fundraising process, be supportive for you. I mean, there's so many organizations around um, that really are. So that's, James, did I, did I go over my, I wasn't sure how long no, I was supposed to talk, we, so. we actually have a question. Um, oh. a, one person asked, are Kiva loans issued to individuals or to the business entity itself? And um, I was wondering, can you talk about um, nonprofits and Kiva a little bit? Sure, yes. So you do apply, uh, so you, you couldn't apply as an individual. If you had, um, like Amber is a one person business, but her business is Soda, Ash and Sand. So she as Soda, Ash and Sand applied, but she, Amber, received the monies because she is Soda, Ash and Sand. Does that make sense? Okay. And um and feel free my, my emails on here y'all can y'all can email me separately as many questions we can talk through but a not so nonprofits can apply on kiva um the biggest part kiva as an organization is just looking to see can you repay um and they're just going to look to see what does that look like but we've had nonprofits i didn't pull up that as a as a filter but i can do some follow-up um and show you who fundraised i mean the biggest part for kiva is just I mean, you're able to tell your story, you're able to, you know, showcase what your business is or who you are. Um, let's see, another person from Michigan. <laughs> we got to get some more Tennessee folks. Um, oh, and we do. I have actual, an actual person, um, but this is a great picture. You're just able to see, you know, he's holding paintbrushes, kind of a description of who he is. Um, and I, I wanted to, we do have one current local, um, let me I feel like sorry I forgot to bring him up we have one guy that's currently raising with Kiva that I wanted to share if y'all were interested um, in supporting a current oh, I lost him um, oh goodness sorry Okay, I'll find, I'll quit sharing. I feel like quit sharing my screen. Um, but he is a current Kiva loan. He is raising um, $6,000 to, he's, he's, host, he's having a record store. They're launching a record store here in Chattanooga. And so he's pivoting um, on the, to be able to have online sales for his records. So um, I can put that in the chat. Hey, um, um, while you look for that, another person asked what happens if, they don't raise the entire amount of their goal. Yes. So um, if they don't raise the entire amount, you don't get anything. So it is all or nothing. You have to, within that time frame, you do have to raise, um, you have to raise the full amount or you don't get anything. Any other questions? And Katie, um, am I still an endorser for Kiva? You are. <laughs> so if anyone yeah. in the art sector wants to apply for a Kiva loan, um, you know, email me and I'll be your endorser and your enforcer if you want me to. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that, um, oh, so Amy asked, yeah, Yellow Rocket, thank you. I'm just opening up the chats. Um, so, what percentage of loan applicants are successful? That's a great question. I don't have, I know for our, um, and I didn't show that in my, I had it. Um, we had out of everyone who has applied in Chattanooga, we've had 13 fully funded loans for almost $60,000. And typically they've been, we have, we're at 46.2 female business owner and 76.9 minority business owners. So out of, the, out of our launch with Kiva, that's how many that we've had. So um, your question, we've had 15 go through, so only two did not fund. 
Um, and I don't think there are any other lenders that can say they have those diversity statistics. So right. um, we, uh, whatever Artsville can do to support what you're doing, um, if people want to apply for loans, Katie, let us know. And we'll share it all across our social and um, help build energy and help them raise the funds from the public. So um, it, does anyone have any final questions? And then we'll go back to Barry. And I, I would say one quick thing right now um, with COVID, people are funding pretty quickly. I, I think everyone is, is so wanting to support small business owners and artists and entrepreneurs that typically people are funding between nine to 15 days. It's not a guarantee. I mean, it's still work. You have to share it. As you can see, I mean, Ben, um, let's see, Ben has been on here. He's been on the public platform for three days and he's, he's been, he's, you know, 33% funded. So um, there's just great, I know that crowdfunding is, is, might seem scary, but as James said, we are here, you're not alone in it and we're very much for you. And the entire Kiva community and the country is, is supportive um, of small business owners. And so if you're looking to raise and you just need, you know, some funds, then let's talk. And I can I think I'm muted um, oh. we'll make sure to include Katie's contact information in the follow-up email so you can reach out to her and um, Katie if you will stop uh, okay. screen sharing we'll uh, see if Barry can get on thank y'all thank you thank you for sharing that with us thank you Katie you've inspired me to uh, try this one more time James I might be a little bit scared now that you're the enforcer and I'm if I fail, I'm going to be in trouble. So <laughs> I'm a gentle enforcer. <laughs> All right. Hold on just one second here. Okay. How's that? We see in the big screen. Yeah, we see it. Thank you. All right. Fantastic. Appreciate it. Um, so I'm with the uh, Chattanooga Tourism Company, and um, thank you for having me, uh, James. We appreciate it very much. Be nice to speak. I want to share just a little bit about. I'll talk a little bit about challenging times um, that we're all going through, and it's not real pretty for the travel and tourism uh, business. But we'll share some of that. We'll also talk about some of our efforts at Chattanooga Tourism Company, both over the past past couple of months, and then what we're doing going forward. And then finally, I'm very excited to share some of our uh, branding and marketing uh, approach with you all uh, as we go forward, uh, as, we, as we just now get ready to, to uh, start launching uh, some of our advertising to try to bring more visitors in to spend money and visit and enjoy our community. So um, I will start before I jump into a couple of charts. Um, again, our product, you know, we don't, we don't develop, we don't create a product. Uh, our product is our community, and you, uh, you all in the arts and culture uh, world are a vital part of what makes Chattanooga unique and special and different. Um, and then we, you know, we lay in, layer in our, our outdoor, uh, kind of outdoor brand awareness that we have and some other things, and that's really what makes us special. So uh, we appreciate what you all do for our community every single day. And, um, and I will uh, jump right in. So first off, um, so this is kind of what the impact is on tourism uh, revenue. So travel and tourism, uh, these are national numbers, but it shows uh, the significant hit that in March and April at the peak of the uh, stay at home orders. And then you'll see that uh, that's starting to reduce a little bit, but you see that it also runs all the way in, in through December. Um, this, these, again, these are national numbers. I can tell you at the state level for the month of April, uh, the state lost $49 million in sales tax. 92% uh, of that loss or 45 million of the 49 million in sales tax that the state lost was from the travel and hospitality industry, 92%. Um, we were affected in Chattanooga immediately. Spring break in March is always a big month for us. 
uh, we canceled uh, all of our marketing and advertising and, and pulled that immediately for spring break. Uh, and uh, it's just uh, pretty tough. These are some of the events uh, that are canceled. So these are conventions, meetings, sporting events. We had uh, 95,000 attendees scheduled to come uh, who uh, canceled their events. And that was a, a, almost a $76 million impact on our community. I will say that about 65% of these, a little bit more than half of these, have rescheduled at a later date. So we worked with them to, to get space and accommodations. So they will be coming either later in 2020 or in 2021. So that was uh, a little bit of positive news there. Chattanooga found to be the fourth most vulnerable economy during the pandemic. This was a headline in the paper. This was a national headline based on research by LendingTree and MoneyGeek. Money Geek. Um, this came out, I think, in uh, right at the towards the end of March, first part of April. Uh, the reason that they determined that we're the fourth fourth most vulnerable economy is because of our dependency on dining, retail, lodging, entertainment, and cultural assets. So again, those are those are the big areas that are that are important and, and critical to a visitor's experience when they come. So dining, retail, lodging, entertainment, and cultural assets. So travel and tourism took the first hit really in the uh, beginning of the pandemic, and it's going to take the hardest hit. Again, expected overall nationally to represent about forty to forty-five percent of the total economic downturn. Locally, get to give you an idea, we have about 31,000 people in tourism jobs in Hamilton County. You can see here that 30,000 uh, 30, uh, right in this area right here, and you see that 10,000 people, one in three, have lost their jobs. So this is, uh, this is the largest loss, both job-wise and percentage-wise, uh, to our employment here in, in uh, Hamilton County. And this is from the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. Lodging taxes, and uh, just so you'll know, the majority of our funding at Chattanooga Tourism Company comes from hotel taxes. Uh, we, we're, you know, we're hurting. Uh, the lodging industry is hurting. The entire tourism industry is hurting. The arts and cultural community, we know, is hurting too. So, with our revenue tied to hotel performance, and represents about ninety percent of our revenue total in our budget. Um, we're down almost 60%. So we're operating on 40% of what we would normally receive. Um, I can, we do not expect uh, travel and tourism to return to its 2019 levels for about three years. Um, this hit, we've made a lot of adjustments. We've re, we re reworked our budget, amended our budget. Um, we are focusing on everything that is specific to our core mission of bringing more visitors into town. And I will uh, share some, some information on how we're doing that. But our core mission is to bring people into town and to generate and, and support and stimulate the local economy. Um, it was extremely disappointing uh, for, uh, extremely challenging for us to make a decision to postpone the tourism grant that we just uh, just announced really right in uh, January, first part of February. And for this pandemic to hit, um, that's the reason we just, we can't, we can't do it right now. We've got to focus on our core mission. Uh, again, we've made furloughs, uh, we've laid off some people, we've reduced uh, all of our uh, HR expenses, we've reduced all of our Every single line item across the board has been reduced uh, with the exception of one, which is a little bit of uh, leisure advertising, and I'll share more about that. But we've reduced everything and, and we are running very lean. Again, we don't have a product. Um, our product is the community and we are extremely talent dependent. So our, our team is really what makes everything run. So held on to uh, our key team members and, and trying to, again, just focus 100% on our uh, core mission. We've uh, eliminated pretty much everything else at this time. 
So this is a little chart about the Americans, uh, kind of their state of mind. Uh, it says, you know, really, if you look at it, um, about 20, well, about half of, uh, it's about split half and half about, I'm ready to travel. I may have a little bit of hesitation or I'm ready to travel or I need a little bit more time. So again, travel is going to come back a little bit slower than we hoped. Uh, but about half the people right now, and this was uh, just updated just at the end of May. This talks about, and I'm sorry if the, it's a little bit small, but this is the uh, perceived safety of travel activities. This is what actually people are, are actually, they, what they think is safe to do. So uh, a lot of outdoor things, uh, road trip, visiting friends and relatives, uh, going shopping, staying in a hotel uh, up there higher than I would have anticipated and eating in a restaurant. But um, you can kind of see uh, this, this is their perceived safety. I'm gonna skip on over. This is what they actually plan to participate in when they travel. And this is for summer, and this is uh, recent information as well, but you see that it's eating, shopping, and outdoors. So eating, shopping, and outdoors are really uh, right up here in this sector. And then you'll see uh, down in here about 20% uh, would plan on visiting an art gallery or museum or arts and cultural institution and then uh, live musical events. I think that's still, you know, that's going to be unfortunately something that's going to be very slow uh, to return as well. So our goal, again, we, we uh, immediately uh, shifted our focus uh, originally to, and this is our, this is our kind of our strategy, but first to support uh, and connect with our community and, and partners and um, try to keep our pride and spirits up and, and also try to help out just supporting our, our local economy and our, our local partners. Then we're kind of moving into the restart phase and then into the recovery phase. So we'll walk through that and I wanna share a couple of things that we, uh, where we spent supporting. We, we put on a lot of uh, virtual concerts and this one happened just really uh, very quickly the day before St. Patrick's Day and found out that, uh, you know, again, I had you got uh, Sean Phipps on our team had a and a few other brilliant team members uh, had an idea and all the bars had closed for St. Patty's. Obviously, the music wasn't going to be happening, but a local band that Sean knew he reached out and and said uh, Stringers Ridge and, and they had lost three gigs that they were supposed to perform that day. So we asked them to perform on a live stream and they had never done one before, but it was a tremendous success. And they played, ended up playing in front of the largest audience that they've ever played for. And they earned enough uh, from, uh, we have a small stipend we provided plus all the tips that they made on the virtual tip jar uh, enough to cover those gigs. Uh, I think that they also, um, I think their following uh, tripled. It was amazing. I think they had about 30,000 uh, views or so. And then um, overall, we, we did this for other, other musicians as well. We hosted, I think, five, 14 live concerts and reached more than half a million people uh, with this effort. We also put together an auction. Um, just, you know, this was a citywide auction to benefit partners. Uh, it closed, I think, in uh, right around in April. Our, we had about 350 items from 200 businesses and artists who participated in the auction. We had a goal of raising about $45,000. We exceeded that. Uh, and every single bit of that money went directly back to the businesses and the artists. So $45,000 went straight back to local businesses and artists who, who provided an item. Uh, we covered the administrative cost of it, and that, that was it. Um, Again, it's something that we're already paying our team. We're paying our team, so we wanted to do something good. So this was another area where we were in the, in the support phase. Now I'd like to kind of shift in uh, to something that was really fortuitous. We had done a lot of branding research with the community. We had reached out over the past uh, 12 months and we were planning to launch our branding right at the beginning of March uh, with our spring break efforts. Um, we found us, ourselves in this unique position where we had to slow down on that. Uh, we had spoken to visitors, potential visitors. Uh, a lot of you all participated in some focus groups and surveys, uh, and which were wrapped up in January. But um, we're, um, 
we're, we, were, we have this branding work that's been done and I want to share a couple of things with you just real quick about it. Uh, we know it's on mark. We've tested it. We know it resonates. Uh, we, we're going to have new creative for our advertising and messaging. And we know that it uh, encapsulates who we are as a community. I think it really does a great job. So um, I want to give you just kind of the pillars that it's based on. And there are four pillars, our natural assets, created assets, our community attitude and our business attitude. So it's really, it really is about, you know, and, you know, people say, you know, in Chattanooga, we've got this special, special way of doing things. And so I want to want to read one and you'll hear these, these attitudes come out. Um, created assets is, you know, when you come, don't bother building some silly online itinerary. You won't need it. Just ask when you get here. We don't bite. We'll point the way, maybe even tag along. Because we never tire of it. Want to visit our aquarium? You should. Just inches of glass separate you from 12,000 sea creatures, or our art museum, or our zoo. Or if you like to take selfies, which we know you do, we've got plenty of public art everywhere that you can pose in front of and flash that famous smile. And then on business attitude, just read that real quick. Uh, a city of part-time techies, part-time climbing guides, full-time rugged individualists. We value hard work and pride ourselves on a bootstrap kind of outlook on life, liberty, and the pursuit. We handcraft everything from innovative business startups to our own specialty whiskeys, signature dishes, and beers, to Chattanooga-style public art, film festivals, and live music. People think we're Tennessee backwoods, but we were the first gigabit internet city in the U.S. of A. Not to mention we're home to such national favorites as Moon Pie, Little Debbie, and Glass Bottle Coca-Cola. So there. So I kind of just tease this up, but I've got a video and I know that uh, technology challenges, uh, it's dip very difficult to stream over, over um, the Zoom meeting. So we're gonna put in the chat a video link. I'd like everybody to put your uh, microphone on mute and I'm gonna time us and get it's a, it's a two minute video, but if you can click through and uh and watch the video i will come back in three minutes and all i can say is turn the volume up when you do it I'm not getting anything. Ah, oh, there it is, I guess. Okay. No.
Okay. I'm going to come back in. Everybody's wrapping up on that. Again, that's a video that kind of really encapsulate uh, the, kind of the essence of our brand and uh, the, the attitudes of our community. So uh, that just kind of hopefully sets the tone. That's going to be in that and the pillars and other things are and a lot more information that we have in research is uh, the foundation for our brand going forward. Uh, Barry, a couple of people said they didn't see the video, so we will make sure to include that link in yes, our follow-up email. And yeah. um, uh, Emily asked, uh, who is Position Music? Who? I don't know who, uh, Emily, you might want to ask that question. I'm not sure of what you were referencing. Okay. I will tell you that that video is really not made for it's made for something just like this when we explain explain our brand. Um, we have a different outward facing videos um, that we've just released uh, in our community pride building uh, segment of kind of where we are. Uh, and then we're shooting some new commercials. We'll actually be in town. Uh, we have a crew and a local um, production company who is shooting some new commercials for us next week uh, that will inc incorporate this and we'll be pushing out. So that will all be uh, custom and, and done specifically for our new campaign that's going to be launching here in the end of June and first part of July. Thank you. Um, so I know we have about 15 minutes left and we have another speaker too. Yeah. Do, do um, I don't know if you can see the question. Someone asked who shot the video. Um, and then if anyone else has questions, you know, please put them in the chat or unmute yourself and ask them. And then we'll move on to Miriam's presentation. Yep, that's fine. Um, again, that video was put together with all stock footage that we had from different partners. Uh, again, it was mainly just to convey, again, the essence of the brand. We have a crew in next week that's starting to shoot new uh, well, the crew is local. Uh, I think Pathfinder is our, our local group that's working with them, uh, with our agency and shooting for um, uh, all, uh, new footage for the actual commercials. And then um, I will wrap up. I do want to wrap up the reason why this is um, important. And I'm going to quote Keeley Crew, who said her main goal is to sell local art. It's a commercial. This is a commercial gallery for local artists. And uh, I love Keeley's quote here, completely unsolicited. This was in the Times Free Press. It said, she knows that consistently 80% of her sales were made to visitors looking to take home a meaningful souvenir of their time in Chattanooga. Our job is to bring more visitors into this community to support local businesses. And uh, that's what we're focused on 100%. So James, again, I appreciate uh, the time and uh, we're set up as a great destination with outdoor recreation, cultural assets, and a drive market to uh, some very significant population centers. I appreciate it and sorry for the technical difficulties. No problem. We had some last week too, so <laughs> they must be contagious. Um, any qu final questions before we move on to Miriam? All right. Well, thank you. I'm going to share Miriam's screen. And Miriam, if you want to introduce yourself. and Yeah, of course. So hi, everyone. My name is Miriam Manda. Um, I recently just joined the Arts Build team this past March as a new program associate. Um, so I'll quickly share a little bit about me and my background before I jump into my presentation. So um, I recently uh, moved back to Chattanooga about um, after about 12 years. I graduated from Udawa High School and I left uh, to get my BA in Cultural Anthropology and Public Archaeology at Wesleyan University. And then I moved to San Francisco and I was able to um, participate in an archaeology internship uh, that led me to a position where I led uh, the visitor services program uh, for a museum <clears throat> with the Presidio Trust, which is a federal agency that manages uh, the Presidio National Park, which is uh, a large national park that's just outside of the Golden Gate Bridge. And then I left that position and I uh, spent the last two years in Greece uh, where I earned my master's in cultural heritage management through the University of Kent 
and the Athens University of Economics and Business School. All right, James, we can move on to the next slide. Um, so in working on the, uh, this mapping project, we partnered with the Chattanooga Des Design Studio, and they're a local nonprofit that's focused on education, advocacy, and facilita facilitating urban design. Um, you can check out their website, it's linked in this slide if you want more information about them. So the project um, was really a pause for arts builds to um, examine uh, the impact of our funding and support in the community in the community um, so the first uh, set of immediate results that we got were a set of chrono chronologically organized uh, interactive google maps that feature the following arts build initiatives uh, starting from 2015 up until today and you can see that list that james has here on the slide um, so today we're going to be focusing on our full programmatic map uh, that's currently available uh, for anyone to view on our website under our our work section um, but if you want to view each individual um, map by year um, feel free to contact me and we can move on to the next slide. Okay, so I'd like to share, quickly share a little bit about what informed the project. So the data that we used uh, to create the points for each uh, funded program was collected using the addresses that, was, that were shared through our grant and program applications, um, as well as just like sourcing um, organizations addresses through basic searches. Um, and we chose to specifically look at the past five years because uh, that's when we began to focus on creating more access. Uh, so these maps were a way to see the impact of this shift in our mission. Um, and when we take a look uh, at the map, you'll see that we've added both the Hamilton County and district borderlines. Um, and that really helped us, you know, scope the project. And uh, while most of the data points you'll see fall within the Hamilton County border, um, there are some outliers uh, and they're mostly associated with the Holmberg Arts Leadership participants um, because although um, many of them uh, work in Chattanooga, uh, they reside outside of the, the county um, and we use their addresses for that. And you'll also, um, Notice that we did not um, map out the Arts Build Imagine program, and that program partners with um, all 41 Hamilton County elementary schools um, because they act. The Hamilton County School District actually already has their own interactive map uh, that's linked in this presentation, so you're welcome to take a look at that. Uh, we also looked at uh, the City of San Diego, who created a similar interactive map and. Uh, it also shows the impact of arts organizations in their city. So now, James, if we can actually switch um, to taking a look at the map, and I'll quickly just um, show you some of the features in the map. All right, great. So, James, if you want to just quickly uh, scroll down the left side to show everybody. Um, yeah, so you'll notice that um, everything is organized by program um, and every program has its own icon um, that is coded so you can easily view it inside the map. And um, there's also ways of getting a little bit more information that, um, other than just you know the program itself. So James, if you can click on the Highland Park Neighborhood Association icon towards the top. Um, so yeah, if you notice, he clicked on that and uh, it has a short description of the actual program. So the um, Tennessee Arts Commission grants, the Community Cultural uh, Connections and Equity in the Arts all have brief descriptions of the programs that were funded. And James, now if you could scroll down to the District 3 um, and click on it. Uh, the, yeah. The, that, yeah, ex exactly. So um, there's also ways to filter the information. So if you want to focus on a specific area, for example, District 3, um, you can look at that specific area. And then another way to filter um, the information is just by um, program. So James, if you want to uncheck um, everything except for the equity in the arts program. 
you can do that as well. And you can zoom out so you can get a better idea. So yeah, those are um, the different ways that you can filter the, the, the map. And it's also easily shareable. Um, and I encourage you all to take a look. And if you have any feedback or any corrections, uh, please feel free to let me know. So now we can hop back to the presentation. Okay, so um, what did we learn from the mapping project? So uh, the project most obviously has helped us, um, helped show our geographic presence um, in the impact within the community landscape, but more importantly, we're able to build a more nuanced picture. Um, and that's helped us clearly see um, some more specific details. Uh, for example, we're, easy, we're able to easily see that Arts Build has the greatest impact in the downtown area. Um, and this point um, I'll highlight is that, you know, because there's um, this heavy concentration is due uh, to the centralized location of most major cultural um, and community organizations. And also, you know, in looking back at the data for the, for the past five years, it also allowed us to see that there has been a shift um, uh, that we can see because we changed our strategic and cultural planning um, in support for um, new and smaller size organizations. And you can see that shift happening um, after 2017. We also were able to see that uh, without the IMAGINE program, uh, we wouldn't have a presence in the more rural areas of the county. Um, so we really need to find ways to, to better serve rural, our rural communities. Uh, it's also allowed us to identify uh, the major areas within the county that are lacking in engagement and you can see um, the five districts that we've identified and then just like the major uh, neighborhoods within those five districts. And we can go on to the next slide. All right. Um, so now we can use this information to make uh, better for informed decisions and we're also going to be taking some of the next some of the following next steps such as uh, identifying more community uh, programs organizations and artists in the areas um, that we've identified that we're not currently serving uh, we're also uh, working with current partners to engage in outreach efforts in underserved communities bringing more intention um, being more intention about making resource allocation and distribution more equitable to underserved communities and also starting to gather more data um, about the audiences our partners are serving and that'll hopefully hopefully help us um, as we move on with this project in the future um, make continue to make more informed decisions okay now i want to you know, touch on some new engagement steps that we've taken. Um, so this year we launched a, a pro program called Arts Build in the Community. And this program is aimed at connecting directly with residents. Um, and so we plan on visiting um, community centers in every district in the county. We made our first visit um, in February to the Eastdale Recreation Center. And we consciously made this an evening program um, to make sure that uh, it was accessible to people who work. Um, so it was like a 5.30 to 7 on a Thursday evening. And we also partnered with Art120, uh, who talked about their work and also led a fun activity. It was a really successful event. Um, we're also building relationships with community leaders and influencers, um, adding staff with different perspectives and backgrounds. And we also have added community members to our grant review panels. All right, so I'd like to end um, with uh, some food for thought. So while the project um, has been able to answer the broader question of uh, what the geographic impact of our program funding is, um, it's also raised many more questions that it, than it's answered. So um, I you know, shared some questions that I hope that we can all start to think about. Um, and we can, and that can hopefully help us better serve our community. Um, so feel free now to um, ask any questions or if you have additional um, questions that, you know, uh, were brought up in my presentation that we might start to think about that are related to um, serving our, our community better.
All right. Well, if we don't have any questions about the mapping project, we will share it with you um, in the follow-up email. Uh, it's also on all of our social media feeds, and it has a home on our website now so that anyone in the public can, can view it and, and create and have dialogue with us. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Rodney now, who's going to um, talk to you about some updates and um, also open up the floor for any announcements or information that people would like to share. Sure, real, real uh, quickly. Hey, thanks, Miriam. I'm, I'm really glad you all are beginning to meet Miriam and uh, uh, hopefully soon we'll be uh, meeting her in person, you know, when uh, things get better. And uh, again, thanks to Barry and Katie. Those were great presentations. These have been uh, great Friday uh, informational uh, meetings, I think. Um, and I, I will encourage you, my reflection is also about the mapping. So if you want to be proactive, if you're an artist or an arts organization, you take a look at the map and then part, uh, uh, partner with people within those communities. And then you could be applying for CCC grants or other grants that we have. So it's a great tool for you to be proactive of going out in those communities because we will be trying to you know, find those underserved uh, areas. Uh, speaking of grants, uh, I've sent out an, uh, information that uh, the Tennessee Arts Commission, the grant uh, deadline for ABC grants is July 1st. Uh, and uh, check our, our website or uh, Tennessee Arts Commission. If you go to their site, look at ABC grants. Uh, we manage, Arts Build manages those uh, grants for Hamilton County. So uh, please do take a look at that. We'll be opening up uh, CCC grants again pretty soon for our, for projects that happen after July 1st. So uh, pretty soon we'll get, uh, give you the opportunity to start applying for our CCC grants. Uh, I'll mention that the Tennessee Arts Commission grants are only for arts or, or excuse me, are only for nonprofit organizations. You don't have to be an arts uh, nonprofit, but it has to be an, a nonprofit organization. Whereas for CCC, really they're open uh, to anyone who has a great idea how to make our community better through the arts. So whether you're an organization or an individual, you can apply for those funds. Also, I'll share that, um, and, and, J and James, make sure I'm saying this right, that we will uh, be opening up our artist uh, emergency fund uh, here. Uh, so are we, James, that, uh, are we opening it up today or Monday? Yeah, uh, we're going to open it on uh, Wednesday. Okay, so next week, yes. Yes, and this these are for new applications still. Not if you've received ar artist emergency uh, funds before, you're not eligible. But uh, we are opening up up to five hundred dollars that can be uh, you can apply for uh, through our uh, Google application, uh, Google form. Uh, it's pretty simple. So. Uh, get the word out that we've had some very generous donations so that we're able to reopen that uh, fund as well. And so, if I can just add, Rodney, that um, you know we were able to fund 91 grants uh, when we opened the fund the first time, uh, but thanks to a gift from the Benwood Foundation, we we're able to open it up again next week, so we really appreciate that. And thanks to the, the public who donated to it as well. Uh, so yeah, we're glad to open it up again. Yeah, so excellent. Uh, it's 11.30, but if somebody has something uh, pressing, they wanna just uh, unmute themselves and just uh, uh, share something very quickly about what's going on in the next week, uh, that would be great. Anybody have anything? Um, I'd just like to say I'm thrilled to find that there is a cultural anthropologist, another one, who graduated from Udawa High School. I've spent my career, as you know, Rodney, and I'm looking forward to meeting Miriam, and I'm very much interested in your um, Udawa and Apison and East Brainerd area program, and particularly folk art. So if there, we can work something out where I can help with those things, I would love to do it. That's been, I've worked with those areas before, but I'd love to come back in and see what kind of resources, people that we are maybe missing, particularly in the folk arts. Great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Yeah. Anybody yeah. else? Oh, I was just going to say, Betty, please feel free to reach out to me. I will. I will. Betty's a Holmberg grad, so we have her info. Yeah. Uh, anything else? Anybody? 
Hey, you all. It's Keila Jackson Harris, and I just want to say thank you so much for these opportunities to come and gather. I wanted to just announce um, we have Camp Coyote going on, which is awesome. If you're interested, go to www.coyote, and that's K E E O D Y. That's Keila and Jody together .com. And also, um, I saw Rick on the, on the call. We are uh, actually participating with the Juneteenth celebration. Rick has really worked hard to get the Juneteenth celebration going. And so we're going to be on a Tuesday virtual gallery tour uh, for the Elizabeth Catlett presentation time. And so I just am excited, and I'm inviting everyone. And thank you again, James and Rodney, for this opportunity. Thank you. And I've heard great things about your camp, by the way, um, on Facebook. So, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and Rick, uh, and Rick, are you still there? Uh, can you tell us when um, Juneteenth? I know it's June nineteenth. It's going to be at Walnut Street Bridge, but anything else? Are you still there? Maybe not. Hey, um, just because we're running a little late, um, I just want to remind all the. People who applied for mission support. Obviously, this week is where we're going to do our, our Zoom review. So just be sure if you have any questions uh, to reach out to me as well. So I think we better wrap it up. We're at time. So James, last words. Just my last words today are just thank you to everyone for participating. And um, please continue to reach out to us and let us know how we can be um, a resource to the arts sector here in Chattanooga and Hamilton County. And everyone have a great weekend. Bye.